David? Carl? I don't, I don't think you need any introduction. You don't need an introduction. <laughs> Everybody knows you. Uh, well, today, I want to get to know you even a little bit more better. OK. I want to understand a bit from your presence, sure. right, the past, and the future. But you played this game <laughs> totally different than anybody else in the game industry. And you could say so, yeah. When I met you a uh -huh. long time ago, guys, long time ago. <laughs> well, when was it, actually? <sighs> I think that's Nine, eight, ten. Yeah, something like that. Nine, Nine years ago, I think. Uh, uh, yeah. I always saw you as a visionary. And when I came in Unity, mm -hmm. and I can honestly tell everybody, there was moments I thought, seriously, David? Really? That will never happen. <laughs> a few years later, oops, he's right. Uh, so I wonder where that started being yeah. a visionary, seeing what, what I couldn't see, and understanding how you're going to achieve that. OK. that's a Really terrible question. Uh, <laughs> no, because I, I, I don't think I don't think anyone. Yeah, I don't know, visionary. Um, no, so I think um, I think Unity taught us to think big, uh, and we sort of I think we trained it actually. Um, like in the basement, we were like democratized game development, and like we had no idea what that meant. Like there was no measure for that. Um, but when you start, I think yeah, it's you, you train yourself. You you sort of. Um, you train yourself at looking at the world sort of bigger and bigger picture. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's a matter of training, actually. Um, and allowing yourself, <coughs> one of my <coughs> biggest hobbies, and some of you know this because we've, been, we've, drunk, we've had drinks together. <laughs> <laughs> many of you, actually. <laughs> Not all, though, but many. Um, I forgot the bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, what's the deal with that? <laughs> um, no, it, it's like uh, one of my biggest hobbies is like the, 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 the big talk. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you have drinks and you just say things that are sort of bigger and bigger in magnitude and you sort of try them on for fit. Uh, I think that's part of it. Um, you know, could, could a game engine take over the world? Could, could a game engine be an operating system? Could a game engine company? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, I, I, it's, it's not, right? But it's, it's like you try these things on for fit and you explore them as ideas and, you know, what, it, what would it mean if, you know, if, if, if a game engine was like an operating system, would the game engine company be Microsoft? I'm not saying we should be, <laughs> but like, I think that's a way of, uh, yeah, I think, you, I, I think you can hone that, basically. Um, so you learned over time mm -hmm. what you said. And, and by the way, we've been surprised, like, and you've been surprised if you followed Unity for more than a few months, like that what, what a company like that could do. It's not obvious that a, that a game engine company could end up sort of being this weird hub for like all of game development, bringing in kind of, you know, platform partners and, and customers and, and all the service partners and bringing in services and then putting it all into this weird kind of hub and spoke um, shape. Um, but that's happened, and, and every, every year we, we've been surprised by that, and that sort of emboldens you to think bigger and, and look further afield, I guess. So we, you learned over time, uh, mm -hmm. and it, what I always saw is the perfect, beautiful <coughs> story. Mm -hmm. uh, going from tiny indie in Denmark to an international company who stays with the same philosophy. If you look back now, mm -hmm. what would you have done differently? Sure. Actually, I'll just go back to the other question a little bit, uh, because sometimes, you know, I was CEO for a long time, and, and then I gave it over to John, who was doing a fantastic job and really kind of continuing the, the, the old ideas with some new ideas and energy. But, but, he, um, but we sort of, um, often I, I felt like, sometimes I felt I was like, um, you know, this kind of, you, you know this idea, um, uh, leading from behind? <laughs> sometimes I felt I was following from ahead. <laughs> Because sometimes I was like up ahead, but I was sort of following what the company wanted, what the, what the industry wanted, and, and letting the company sort of tell me you know, what was needed and possible. Um, but anyway, sorry, that was just, just an idea that I've had recently. Um, looking back, feeling how it was. Anyway, the other question was, sorry, I, I blanked. You have, it looks, uh, everything went perfectly. But when you look back... Everything did not go perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every crash, <laughs> every like, delay in release, <laughs> every stupid thing, yeah, it's not perfect. It looked perfect. 
from what would it, for, if you if you zoom out for <laughs> far enough, it looks pretty good, yeah. What would you change? What would you have done differently? Differently. What, yeah. what, what do you know now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What have you learned over time? Yeah. When you would go back. Sure. So I've answered this question before, and I've answered it in a way where I said like not a single thing could have gone differently, just because you know it seems like such a series of luck that you know a butterfly flapping its wing differently in Malaysia in the <laughs> 20s would have you know, thrown it all off. But I, OK, there's actually one thing I would have done differently. I would have stayed a little bit truer to the core vision. Uh, and we've not betrayed it. No? <laughs> and, and no, no, we've been very <laughs> diligent about it. But there's been moments, and you couldn't really see this from outside maybe, from inside the company. We've strayed. We've been lured in by sort of clever ideas. Um, you know, at some point we were, um, at some point we told ourselves there's a lot of money in the military world, yeah? So <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, like, and, and there is a lot of money in the military <laughs> world, by the way. It really is true, there's money there. Um, and we're like, what if we could not betray the core, but also work on that? And, 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 and yeah, we weren't good at it, our hearts wasn't, weren't in it, and it just was kind of messy. Um, so I think uh, you know, we, we sort of cut that out and say, like, no, let's do games. Let's be great at this. You know, let's service these guys. And, and uh, you know, the military guys can, no, no. <laughs> yeah, thanks. The military you know, people can still use Unity. You know, it's perfectly open. It's a good platform. Um, but but I, I just sort of keeping, keeping, keeping to the core ideas, I think, served us best. And so most of the mistakes we did along the way was just forgetting about that sort of for short spells of time. Not recently, more in the past, actually. So you just mentioned basically there were some hiccups here and there and things that may be not perfect, but mm -hmm. in the long scheme, everything worked out. Let's flip the question. Mm -hmm. What are you the moments that you really were the most happiest and proud of at, uh, in the last 10 years at Unity? OK, that was last night <laughs> at the party. No, seriously. I, I, I don't know why, but like, I've, I, we've met people before that told us that their companies were created because of Unity or with Unity. We met, you know, people that told us that their careers were built with Unity. Um, but last night, there was like a lot of people telling me that. <laughs> and it was really, thanks for, thanks for that, by the way. You know, about you know, their children's uh, health care being taken care of because of Unity. Their, you know, yeah, just livelihood. So that's freaking amazing. I mean, I, 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 I think, you know, I don't even think of Unity as a company. I think of it as a sort of a federation of tens of thousands of companies. and hundreds of thousands of kind of livelihoods or people's careers. Um, and that was sort of, yeah, last night I was, I was somehow re reminded of that. That was did you, ever, did you ever think that we would host a party at Universal Studios? <laughs> no, but I guess anyone can do that, right? <laughs> it was a great party, by the way. Whoever arranged that is a genius. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like, let's go back now to... <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, I can clap to that. <laughs> Does somebody know? That was uh, Dana. Dana. Okay, Dana. Dana. Thanks, Dana. Seriously, that was awesome. <laughs> let's, let's give it up for Dana. <laughs> I know that Levy likes the party. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to talk about that today. <laughs> Like, let's talk now about Unite here. Mm -hmm. I, one, of the, one of the things in the keynote was very clear that VR is, is there. Mm -hmm. okay. No, let's not look at, at the future, but what do you think is the current applications in VR that are interesting for you? That make it really change, not just something... I, you know, I, I honestly don't know, and I don't think anyone <laughs> knows. But, like, you know, the people here at the conference, and you guys, like, are, are sort of discovering that, and, and we're learning from watching that. Um, I think that's sort of the best we can do right now. Um, it's wonderful that, I mean, and Oculus did this masterfully, you know, drawing in a lot of people that wanted to develop, and we helped by providing pretty awesome tools for that. Um, and, and drawing in people way before there's a market was like a masterstroke, because it's, we're, being t we're sort of learning what VR is for before it's really quite a thing. Um, and that's exciting. I mean, we're seeing we're in the middle of sort of a creation of a new major platform. I think it's going to be one of the major platforms. Like there's the PC platform, there's the, you know, the TV before that, there's the, you know, console, there's mobile, and there's VR. Not to mention AR, which is an even newer thing. But but yeah, I think I think we're in the middle of the creation of that. 
and what and, and what what I remember from the iPhone, the creation of the smart, the, the touch phone era, the App Store era, um, was that during the, the first sort of year, two years of, of the iPhone, you could see which month an application was created in, or maybe at least which quarter, <laughs> because like the, the learnings were going so fast, the discovery of what the platform could do was going so fast. Um, so yeah, we have the same same with VR. I'm not an expert in VR beyond you know just being in love with a vision it. there. You, you see oh, I mean, <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, I mean, like, no, we, I think we just zoom out and we watch what's going on. And another component that was very clear was... But it's going to change everything. It's going to change, you know, education. You know, it's going to change uh, entertainment. It's going to change work. That's a big thing. I, I mean, I, I totally trillion, agree. <laughs> tr trillions of, of value, trillions of dollars of value are going to shift around. And, you know, companies are going to rise and decline because of it. Some of the companies are going to be created from, from this group. What we also saw is, uh, during the keynote, hey, artists was mm -hmm. a, used a lot, and yeah. new, new tools have created that. Why now? <laughs> Finally? <laughs> 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 no, I mean, like, actually, like, if, you, if we zoom all the way back to the early days of Unity, mm -hmm. the artist was kind of the, the person we wanted to serve. Um, uh, when we were making Google, which was this tiny little game that actually was quite good, although it kind of really failed. Um, sold like 2,000 copies. But that's 20 bucks per, so you know. Um, so uh, um, we had only one artist, and we were three programmers. We could only afford one artist. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and we could only really afford him because the government gave some subsidy. <laughs> um, so, but but we, we could only afford him for five months. So, um, <coughs> so, um, so we had to make good tools for him. So, so we really focused on artist tools and, and building blocks. The component system is, an, uh, is a sort of a result of that because it, it, it allows um, the programmers to kind of follow what, I've just learned this word, but it's a great word, um, tools-oriented uh, programming. You know, the, uh, the kind of programming where what you're building is always tools, not just the Unity, but like little tools and extra tools and so on. And that's really the core of Unity um, architecture. But then along the way, I think we ha hired a lot of programmers and not so many artists. And, and <laughs> you know, the programmers sort of you know, maybe forgot a little bit about that. So yeah, we, you know, Unity has become more and more sort of less and less artist friendly maybe over the years. And um, just to be honest, for me, this fire is in Unity, you can see. <laughs> I'm not an artist, I'm not a programmer, but it's the asset store. <laughs> <laughs> the asset store is a pretty good tool. Uh, it's an amazing tool, by the way. Um, no, it's maybe the best tool. But 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 yeah. No. So so I think I think um, I think we're just kind of going back to the roots of saying like let's let's really service the artists and uh, let's simplify some things. Let's add some kind of higher level tools again, um, and you know let's make Unity great again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not gonna comment that one. <laughs> What we ha What's oh. wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> what was for me also interesting is we had a lot of new people attending mm -hmm. to Unite. Yeah. yeah. We have the core programmers. Artists are coming over. Mm -hmm. uh, the game world always shifts forward. What would, you, what would you, your advice be to an indie game city? If you think back when you started, mm -hmm. with your three guys starting in the basement, what would your advice be now to studio to think, hey, to be successful in 10 years, or in a few years. Yeah. So the problem of games, the problem of every creative industry, is that only the top few percent of the products actually succeed. Yeah, it's really sad <laughs> or stressful. Um, <clears throat> so you have to be differentiated and awesome. Uh, that way it requires unbelievably hard work. Um, combined with creativity. Um, so we have to find that. And you know, creativity takes time. It takes not just hard work, but, but it, yeah, it takes kind of allowing ourselves to kind of mull over things and try things out and playing a lot of games, exploring other art forms. I don't know what it takes, but you, know, you sort of know it when you see it. Um, so yeah, I think that you know, we just have to be really good. <laughs> Work really hard <laughs> and be really good. And, and you know, bring maybe different uh, different uh, capabilities together. You know, have have mixed teams from different backgrounds, stuff like that. 
I mean, it, it's kind of tried, to, but, but because there's no good answer. So I remember when, a long time ago, that somebody said to you, one in a thousand, you will even be around next year. <laughs> no, it was one in a thousand that you can be successful. Okay. Yeah, we, that was in the basement. We got this venture, capitalist. You there was this, <laughs> this was venture capitalist who came around, and he looked at what we had, and he's like, one to one thousand you fail uh, to, su to succeed. 999 to 1,000 that you fail. What were you thinking when you were told that? We just put it like the, the pro mill, the 1,000 you know, logo on a, on a piece of paper and printed it and put it on the wall. <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, what else were we going to do with our lives, yeah? <laughs> let's, look I, ahead. let's look ahead. What do you think in five years? Unity. Unity in five years. I think it's um, in many ways the same company as it is today, as it was five years ago, and as it was ten years ago. You know, really good, like, and in five years it's going to be insanely, scarily awesome as a tool. No, seriously. <laughs> the speed, you saw the keynote, right? The speed we're developing on, the, you know, up to, Actually, just the fact that we can go back and rewrite the core. I mean, which company can do that? Like, this is Joachim's work, by the way, and some scary good people around him. Uh, you know, going back and rewriting the transform component. This is hard work because it ties to everything, right? And, and uh, so combining the sort of rewriting of the core with adding new features in five years is going to be pretty, pretty wild. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Um, another is that I, I hope and expect that we'll be able to sort of really um, in a much bigger way kind of help people manage their games, um, you know, beyond ads and analytics, kind of bring it together in sort of a, I don't know, more wisdom uh, um, and, and helping people with more services around okay. the technology. Um, I think will Unity be more like um, more infrastructure, like more operating system like? I, I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised if that sort of evolves in that direction. I think one of, everybody has in the mind here, and everybody talks about it, and is where is going to be VR be? Where is going to be AR going to be? But what is after that even, what do you think, possible? Oh, you know, the, the, the form factors will be really small. We'll put on little glasses. Uh, just in the last few days, um, not at the show, but sort of off, off uh, I went to visit some companies. You see some, you know, miniaturization, um, technology, quantum laser technology that is going to bring kind of these big bulky things into, you know, tiny form factors. Um, so you combine that with, you know, high power graphics and all these things, it's going to be really nice to use. And do you see that possible in the next coming five years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you know, one, two years is too short for a lot of these changes, but three, four, five years, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. Like the technology is going to be so awesome. So I asked a few and, and if you go a little bit further out than five years, I, so think, I think you can see bioconnections. I think we can actually be injecting some of this stuff directly in. So Skynet. I, I, well, that's a different <laughs> angle. That's AI. That's a different problem. We can talk about it, but it's not really. Um, no, it's, 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 um, there are people working on connecting kind of, you know, uh, computer output and input to, neural, to, to the brain um, in non-intrusive or semi-non-intrusive ways. So we can actually do injections. And, and, and sort of a nano, it's not really, well, nanobots call them that, um, that, that place themselves into the brain. This is real work being done. It's early, but you can actually communicate individual single bits to, the, to, to and from the brain already. So there's hope for me to boost my IQ. Ah, I'm not sure <laughs> there's any hope for you. <laughs> You're already so smart. <laughs> so you probably haven't asked a lot of questions over time. And in interviews, but yeah. what is the one question that you said I have never been asked? Like, why they never asked me about that? Fuck, um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been asked a lot of questions and a lot of conversations. I don't know. I'm not sure if there's. I can't think of any anyway. You sure? Because we have an audience here. <laughs> is that a challenge? <laughs> Their challenge is on. <laughs> ask a question. <laughs> the mics are open. Awesome. Your challenge is on to get the question that David never got. <laughs> Let's try this. It's OK if it's been asked before. You, you couldn't know. <laughs> Feel free to go to the mic. You scared them. <laughs> <laughs> brave, brave heart. So uh, 
once upon a time we lived in a world of, that was text. That, that is what? Text, I mean, DOS. Oh, text, DOS, right? yes, yes. Yeah, and so then graphic world changed and Microsoft came along and built an operating system on top of that. We now have a new world of VR. At some point, people aren't gonna wanna take those glasses off. Do you see an operating system being built in a VR world where I can actually code yeah. with my Rift on? Oh, absolutely. Um, you wanna be a little careful with that? I have a friend who was using VR in the 90s and he spent months in VR. Maybe not <laughs> like all 24 hours a day, but probably 15 hours a day. And he got so burnt from it that he ca his brain cannot accept VR anymore. So he puts it on, he gets sick right away. Oh, so sure. be careful with that. But I've seen some pretty cool applications where like you put a text editor into VR and you're in this mountain range, you know, there's this beautiful sort of wind sound and you're just coding. I want to be there and work. Um, but like I said, be a little careful because we're still early days. Um, I would maybe wait spending my full time in there until a few years from now. But, but no, that's going to happen, of course. Potentially, I mean, I can see a cost savings. I mean, I have four monitors at work, and you look at the cost of that versus... Yeah, exactly. Uh, you could spend pretty nice money on a very, very good quality headset, yes. Exactly. And you put in, like, uh, you know, noise-canceling headphones, <coughs> you are somewhere else. I want to do, I, I do this in a plane, by the way, <laughs> and work. Thank or, you very much. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. With uh, Unity's focus on the democratization of game development, uh, do you foresee a day where you don't have to code? A codeless Unity environment where you can, if you want, dive deep mm -hmm. and get into code, but where your average art asset creator can make their entire experience without ever having to touch code? I would like to say yes, and I think we're going to get really far down that path. Um, there's something about code that is magical. It is magic. I mean, it's modern wizardry. So I, 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 I don't, on the other hand, from the, from the other side of that question, I, I, I still see the wizards doing magic. So yeah, code is like magic that works. So no, I th I th yes and no. I mean, most, I, think, I think a lot of people will not have to code. And you can, <laughs> and I think do you I can win do, the challenge? <laughs> and I think, like, I, no, I think, I think you can go really far down that path. And we want to go down that path with you, of course. Thanks. In your capacity as seeing what could happen with Unity and asking questions like, could it be an operating system, did that lead to the mandate for Unity Labs, which has a, the first article on the Unity Labs mm -hmm. page or list of, of posts has an incredible list of goals or exploratory areas that includes like this mixed metaverse of AR and VR applications all mm -hmm. made with Unity, all sort of live with no, you know, no stop button. Mm -hmm. um, so how, I'm, this is something I'm really curious about. How did Unity, which has to focus really hard on like supporting every platform, get such a big amount of visionary like energy and, and give permission to so many people to work on this pure research stuff? How did that come about? So some of it, it just uh, comes from, you know, companies are like organizing forces of their own, right? And they organize us, the people around them, to kind of work for them. And I think, you know, and, 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 and this community, of course, you know, by not, not all of you, but many of you paying little amounts of money, you know, right on a regular basis to us that, you know, f that funds that and allows Unity to be kind of a shared R&D um, unit for the game industry. Um, some of it comes from, from, from John, John's vision of, of really kind of saying, okay, like, you know, we need to go beyond just making the engine and think bigger and so on. Uh, some of it comes from you know, uh, hiring, uh, hiring Silvio Zhuang, who is a visionary if, if there ever was one. Um, it's hard to say what, if it's one thing. But yeah, no, we, 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 we feel a lot of responsibility for, for um, taking the industry forward. Um, and that's what we're going to do. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> You've been with us for a long time. When I heard you say uh, responsibility, it kind of made me think about the moral responsibility that your company has because you're enabling so many amazing, wonderful things that all of us can do. If someone does something bad, I mean, I don't even know what it would be. Yeah. What kind of moral obligation or response do you think you might take to, you know, keep the integrity of the world together? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. No, but... <laughs> well, 
<laughs> no. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs> so if no. somebody builds a Death Star in Unity. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we can hope there is a bug there. Then. <laughs> Some memory management issue. Um, I, I, I think, I think okay, you, okay, if you tell the story of the world, you can tell it through generals and wars and borders and, and politicians and, and whatever. You can also tell it through technology and, and the, the sort of the, 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 the pinnacle of technology are tool technologies, right? Because they sort of enable other things to be built. Um, I'm a believer that, you know, building tools is a good thing just by itself. Um, and it makes so many other things better and, you know, makes livelihoods possible and all this stuff. Um, the problem is like a tool, the better a in order to make a tool really good, it has to be very broadly generic and flexible. Like the hammer is an amazing tool. It's very flexible. It does all kinds of things. It can also hit somebody in the head. And, you know, I mean, you can go down that path. I don't think there is a way for us really to kind of, um, maybe, maybe we'll find a way. Maybe, maybe we can find a way to, you know, enforce Unity to be only good or something. I, 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 can't, I can't imagine, though. Um, we can make the button. The what? We can make a button for it. Is your application safe or not? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't have a good answer. I don't have a good answer. Well, think about it. I will. <laughs> <laughs> you think about it and tell us. Like, seriously, like, uh, if, if, there's, if there's a path, we will, we will take it. So I've been using Unity for a pretty long time mm -hmm. to make non-games. So I've um, just, with my previous startup, I've made uh, some consumer applications. I've made music instruments and all with wow. a games engine. And um, right now I'm also working with a company that makes non-games with mm -hmm. Unity. I know several other friends in startups that are not making games, but mm -hmm. um, Unity is the tool of choice. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, you know, it's a democ uh, democratizing uh, game development. And then I'm thinking, well, if Unity does this, will it be like Flash in 2004? like being a ubiquitous graphics engine for everything? Or can you elaborate on exactly where you're going, where you're saying, uh, like, can a uh, games engine be an operating system? Or where can it go to be just, a, will it be just, will you call it a graphics engine instead of a game engine? Or, like, where would you go uh, to elaborate on that? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I think, I think, you know, the games industry kind of leads in so many ways. Technology-wise, and, and, and you know, you, from from your perspective, or like in the relationship between us, the two of us, and well, you and the company, like you know, Unity is a company that brings the best from the computer game industry and, and brings it to sort of other industries and lets you do, you know, what you do. Um, and I think that's something we've always done, and we want to keep doing. Um, I feel there was more questions in there, but I'm not finding ways to answer them. But well, kind of the the, the thing you, the thing becoming kind of ambiguous, right? I mean, like. If like uh, like like I said like like Flash like I remember like 2004 2005 it was huge it was I mean everywhere Flash games Flash sites um, I guess then it kind of fizzled out because they didn't follow up on HTML5 but anyway um, they screwed up so badly <laughs> <laughs> I was really close to them at the time I, I was kind of in the office a lot talking to them because we were trying to work with them it was a disaster <laughs> we're not we're gonna try to avoid that mistake. <laughs> Well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, no, no, like Unity should remain a very flexible tool and, and an open tool, um, and that should let everyone do their amazing interactive work. Thanks. I wanted to expand upon that question. Is sure. uh, I'm not a game developer. I work in the architectural industry. Uh, for example, though, some things that Unity could add would be things like print, uh, you know, support that other businesses need mm -hmm. that games will more than likely never need. Uh, there are some core things like that that could help business developers out hmm. um, that would really help. OK, I, 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 if, if there are specific things, you should propose them. I'm not sh aware of really, uh, well, printing is one thing. Uh, I don't expect printing as a core feature of Unity anytime soon. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if that's the specific question, it's a no. <laughs> um, but it's an open platform. And it should be, I mean, it is very flexible. Um, yeah. Uh, to um, add on to the two previous questions, um, obviously Unity is becoming so big that it's probably going to be everywhere in probably five years, six years down the road. Um, you know, pretty much everything's going to be immersive. 
you know, we're going to see holograms and everything everywhere. Now the question is, is that uh, as we go down that path and everything's converging, um, things, you know, technology is going to drive things to a lower cost. People will now may not even have a job anymore. Like for instance, self-driving cars with AI, ML is going to drive a lot of people out of work, mm -hmm. I think. Is there something that we can do at this point to think about how we want to alleviate that to, you know, end the suffering? Or is that going to be <laughs> like that forever? <laughs> there is one thing that happens if this happens, and that is that people have a lot more time for entertainment and for experiences. So I think for this local industry, if you just think of this little bubble we live in, it's probably possibly a good thing. Um, on a societal level, I, I don't know, I'm not a politician, um, but I, I, I hope we find good ways of, of taking care of people and, and you know, making sure that you know, people are, don't go hungry. Yeah. Um, however, I think, yeah, I think there's a lot of things we can do to kind of uh, fill the world with, with joy. Uh, that's kind of what their tools are about, and that's you know, what the craft is about. Thank you. So we can do that. Yeah. Let's do one more question because we're already way over time. Oh, I'm sorry. Ooh. Because it's Kai. <laughs> hey. Hi, David. Hi, Carl. So there's been a growing trend over the years of getting children to get into coding and teaching them in school. So we've seen Apple release Swift Playground. Do you ever foresee Unity doing the same thing, maybe with like Unity Junior? So Unity is the Unity Playground, right? I mean, that's, it's, 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 it's been free for uh, many years. Uh, we just made it completely free for uh, educational institutions a couple of days ago. Um, yeah. <laughs> Making sort of a children's version of Unity. My 11-year-old niece, well, she was 11 a couple of years ago, uh, took a, a, a summer course in Unity and came out, you know, having built something pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure if, if, if Unity isn't already that. Um, is there a simpler mode? Is there a children's mode? I, I don't know. Uh, maybe. I mean, if there should be six or seven, we probably need that. We're not going to work on that right now. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe in a few years. I, I, I could see that easily happening. All right, uh, we'll we, we've, we've got some old drafts of ideas. Actually, Silvio is leading labs. Uh, he, he drafted an idea that we called, I think, Unit Toys a few years ago, which had some really nice ideas in it. Um, but yeah, we haven't found time to work on that any time. And, and I really think Unity is that playground already. Cool. Good work. Keep it up. Thanks. 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 So we are over time. Oh, I'm sorry. There's, there's always one thing I want to ask you each time. Is there one thing you never told anybody yet? Something you've done at Unity you didn't tell anybody? Nobody? Yeah. Or maybe a few. <laughs> OK. <laughs> um. There was the case of the stolen ham. <laughs> uh, we were really hungry in the old days. I, I, I don't mean that in a small way. I mean it in a big way. Like we could not afford food. And um, I, was, uh, I, I was invited to a restaurant with my father's wife. And I was working so hard that I came too late to get anything from the menu. And um, they gave me a glass of wine anyway. And I was hanging out with them. And then. After we left, when we were leaving the restaurant, outside the restaurant, there was a big kind of ham for show, not for eat. <laughs> and I was hungry, and I was a little bit tipsy from this one glass of wine on an empty stomach. <laughs> and I looked around, <laughs> and I grabbed it. I'm not, I'm not proud of this. <laughs> I'm not proud of this. Please don't. <laughs> and I ran with it. <laughs> you ate it? Not that night, yeah, but, but, but no, we, we, we ate it for weeks or months afterwards. So what we would do, we would buy like the cheapest pizza with nothing on it, like the margarita pizza from the, from the corner. So you pizzeria. shared it? You shared it? And then we, yeah, we shared it. So that's democratization. <laughs> I'm, not sure, I'm not sure that qualifies, Carl. <laughs> but we had a sharp knife and we cut slices and put it on these pizzas and we ate it for months until it turned a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not proud of this. We, yeah, it's, it's one of the, I think it's the only time I've really stolen something. <laughs> David, <laughs> Carl, a big thank you, my friend. <laughs> Thanks. And keep bringing the passion and the energy to the community. Well, that's what, you, that's what you do. <laughs> You're the most exquisite person I know.
<laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for coming to Unity. Thanks, guys. Nice.